19th century, biologists believed that blending was responsible for pink offspring when crossed with red and white snapdragons. We now understand that this is not the case for the traits that Mendel studied. But how did he figure that out? The reproductive structures of the pea plant are contained in each flower of the plant. They are the stamens and the pistil. A flower self-pollinates, the pollen from the stamen is transferred by wind or insects to the sticky surface on the pistil. A pollen tube develops and grows down the pistil to the egg cell in the ovary. The sperm nucleus in the pollen tube combines with and fertilizes the egg cell. Mendel had to ensure that he could control the parentage of seeds. He wrapped plants that he wanted to self-fertilize so that they wouldn't be pollinated and fertilized by other plants. He clipped off the anthers of flowers on other plants so he could pollinate the plants himself with the pollen from other specific plants. This is cross-pollination. It results in the fertilization of the egg cell of one plant by the sperm nucleus from another plant. I must make this clear for the Society of Natural History. These plants all had terminal flowers, flowers that grow from the ends of the stem. After they had been self-fertilized, they produced plants that had terminal flowers. I called these plants my P1 generation, parent plants that I knew were true breathing. These plants produce flowers that grow from the side of the stem, actual flowers. After these plants had been self-fertilized, they all produced plants that had actual flowers. These plants are true breeding. I decided to make my first cross with true breeding plants. Cross-fertilized true breeding plants for terminal flower with true breeding plants for actual flowers. All the flowers produced in the F1 or first filial generation had actual flowers. I wondered where the terminal factor went. I decided to cross the F1 plants. The F1 plants were not true breeding. That is, they did not produce offspring like themselves. Of the plants of the F2 or second filial generation, three quarters produced axial flowers and one quarter produced terminal flowers. The factor for terminal flowers had come back. Curious to know more, I let each plant of the F2 generation self-fertilize. Of the plants produced, one quarter were true breeding for axial flowers, one half were not true breeding or hybrid but produced axial flowers, and one quarter were true breeding for terminal flowers. Clearly, the hybrid plants contained factors for both characteristics, but produced only axial flowers. The factor for terminal flowers had not disappeared. It was only masked. When combined with a plant that had a similar factor, it produced offspring that had terminal flowers. To explain these results, I believe that the hereditary factors must occur in pairs. These factors must separate in the parent plant, and then each parent must give one factor randomly to the next generation. I will call these factors either dominant or recessive. The dominant factor masks the recessive factor. In this case, the true breeding axial plant have two dominant factors, capital A, capital A. The true breeding terminal plants have two recessive factors, small a, small a, so the trait can show. The hybrid plant has one dominant factor, capital A, and one recessive factor, small a, but only the dominant factor, axial flower, shows. <laughs>